from a three division MMA world champion to a red card in MMA. Here is a look back at the major headlines that happened this past week. Anatoly Malikin made history in Qatar when he defeated Rainier Derrida to win the one middleweight title at 166. Malikin, after the win, is now the one heavyweight champion, light heavyweight champion and middleweight champion, making him the first ever MMA fighter to do so. Earlier, he had defeated Derrida to win the light heavyweight title and now in Qatar, he once again defeated Derrida to become the middleweight champion. After the historic win, fans are now calling Malikin to fight names like Israel Adesanya, Alex Pereira and Francis Ngannou and interestingly, one CEO Chatri Sityo Tong also mentioned that Malikin will smash Ngannou if a fight happens. So what do you think are the chances of Malikin if he fights these names? Let us know in the comments below. Ilya Topuria, after his win over Alexander Volkanovsky, mentioned that he would like to fight Islam Makachev next for the one lightweight title. Tapuria has not been shy from expressing his desire to be a two-division champion and now Khabib has reacted to this challenge. Khabib, who showed visible confusion regarding the UFC matchmaking, mentioned that the most ideal candidate to fight Tapuria next is Mosar Ivlo. However, he also added that Islam is ready to fight anyone that UFC puts in front of him. Interestingly, someone actually simulated the possible fight between Topuria and Islam Makachev in UFC 5 video game and surprisingly, the game showed that Topuria would knock out Islam Makachev. What do you think would be the result if these two fight inside the UFC cage? UFC announced the UFC 300 main event recently and it will see Alex Pereira fighting Jamahal Hill for the light heavyweight title. Interestingly, Israel Adesanya has now come out with a claim saying that he was offered to fight on the UFC 300 card and face Drikas Duplessis. However, Adesanya also went on to say that Duplessis was not ready to take up this fight and as a result, the fight did not happen in UFC 300. While the three title win of Anatoly Malikin was a major headline from 166, the fight card also produced two controversial decisions or two major headline worthy finishes. The first one saw Jared Brooks vs Joshua Pasho fight ending in a controversial disqualification after Brooks apparently spiked Pasho on the head with a slam. As per one championship rules, this is not allowed and as a result, Pasho won the title back via a disqualification win when Brooks lost his title and for the first time suffered a defeat in one championship after joining the promotion. Elsewhere, Arjun Buller got a red card for not engaging in his fight with Amir Ali Akbari and suffered a disqualification defeat as a result. This was something new to the MMA fans across the world but as per one's rule set, if you are not engaging with your opponent, you are supposed to get an yellow card which will reduce 20% of your purse and if you do it again, you will get a red card from the referee which will result in a disqualification and a subsequent loss. This is exactly what happened with Arjun Buller and as a result of his loss, one CEO has criticized Arjun hardly saying that why should you be a professional fighter when you are not engaging in a fight. PFL held a huge event in Saudi Arabia recently and now they have made a huge signing to their roster. Tyler Sandoz, who almost defeated Valentina Shevchenko in the UFC, signed with the PFC as per many reports and it will be a big boost to the roster that PFL already has, which includes names like Clarissa Shields, Francis Ngannou and Jake Paul, who is all set to make his MMA debut in the future. Tyla Sandoz is currently 19-3 in her professional MMA career and suffered a defeat to Erin Blanchfield in her last fight in the UFC. Detailed versions of all these headlines are available in the description below and do let us know your thoughts on the headlines that happened this past week.